I'm Eleanor Higgs and I'm here at the Natural History Museum in London to learn more about their brand new Jurassic Garden, find out more about Fern, their Diplodocus cast in bronze, and interview Professor Susie Maidman to find out more about how this incredible dinosaur is made. So good morning Susie, it's lovely to have you with us in front of the brand new Diplodocus called Fern. What can you tell us about Fern? Well Fern is an exact replica of um, Dippy the Diplodocus, who you might remember was uh, in the centre hall of the NHM until it went on tour around the UK. Absolutely. Um, and is now at the Herbert Museum and Art Gallery for three years in Coventry. Um, now when it came back to the NHM here, it was 3D scanned, every single bone was 3D scanned. Oh wow. Um, and then was cast in bronze to uh, form Fern. And actually, we took the opportunity to correct a few little uh, <laughs> mistakes in the original cast, because the original cast is over 100 years old. Yeah. So we were able to, uh, to just make a, a few little tweaks to make it even more scientifically accurate. Even more incredible. And you mentioned cast. So when a paleontologist would find a skeleton out in the you know, wilds of Africa or in America somewhere, what are they actually finding? So we find um, fossilised bones. Now, um, these will be a combination between um, actual bone tissue and minerals that have infiltrated the bone over the millions of years uh, that it has been buried um, and, and, and precipitated out um, and have replaced some of the bone. So it depends a little bit on the environment in which they've been preserved. But there is uh, original bone material, but also kind of some of it has been replaced by minerals. Wow. And when you come to somewhere like the Natural History Museum and you walk into the halls or you come outside, are what you're seeing those fossilised bones or are they something different? Sometimes they're those fossilised bones and sometimes they're replicas. And there's lots of different reasons why we might choose to put on display a replica, um, which is an, a cast or exact copy of the bones rather than the real material. An example would be Sophie the Stegosaurus, which we have in our exhibition road entrance now. Um, that's the world's most complete Stegosaurus. And most of the material that you see on display there is the real bone. Um, however, the skull of that specimen is actually kept in the collections behind the scenes. And that's because it was the only Stegosaurus skull that we know that where all of the individual bones are separate. And what we didn't want to do was stick them all back together and stick it on display, um, because actually they're re it's really scientifically interesting to see them all Absolutely, separate. Yeah. Um, so if we stuck them all back together, we would lose some of that scientific information. Um, and also they're very, very fragile. So sometimes we have to think about, are the, is the specimen going to withstand being put on display? Yeah. Now, another reason is that lots and lots of countries around the world have rules um, about the export of fossils. So if we find uh, a dinosaur uh, in uh, somewhere like Brazil, uh, Argentina, Morocco, for example, um, that material actually has to stay in those countries. But we can get copies to show our visitors here. So that's another reason we might want to exchange specimens. Um, so we might have um, a replica of specimen that we can't have here in the UK, but you know, we want to put it on display nonetheless. And you said about Sophie the Stegosaurus, is it co often combined specimens? So you might find a skull in one dis location and a bit of leg and do you combine those sorts of things and make the cast from those? So that is actually the case with Dippy the Diplodocus. Um, it is made up of at least three individuals and actually many more individuals um, make up the skull because we don't have a complete skeleton of Diplodocus. Um, so we've had to sort of put together different individuals to, to understand what the animal looks like. In the case of Sophie the Stegosaurus, it was actually found complete and articulated in the ground. So that is just one individual. One individual. And I've heard a rumour that originally Dippy's back legs were also used as his front legs because of those very reasons. <laughs> Do you know, I've never heard that, but that might, you know, that, that certainly happened in the past where people have um, been trying to reconstruct extinct animals and got the head on the wrong end, for example, in the case of some marine reptiles and things like that. Um, but, you know, most of the time now we have a good understanding of what these animals look like. Um, so we're able to kind of fill in the bits quite sensibly. And when you cast something like fern in bronze, is that a similar process that you would do for casting skeletons in the museum? Uh, it's a similar process, although I think technically it was really um, quite a complex process. And I believe this is the biggest brass sculpture that um, the, the, the makers uh, of fern had ever made. Oh so goodness. it was incredibly complex. And also um, the, the vertebrae are, are held together you know, under their own weight. Um, so they're articulated um, very, very carefully and very technically um, with the right balance to make sure that it all stays up. Um, so I think this was quite a technical challenge because it's such a heavy material. Yeah, and absolutely. often when we're casting things, we make it out of a much lighter material. So how would a normal cast be made? What would that sort of process look like? Well, in the olden days, you would take uh, the bones and you'd cover it in, in some sort of latex or rubbery type um, 
sort of liquid that would then solidify. You then peel it off the bones. You then put a plaster of Paris inside it uh, to make an exact replica. Um, however, today we often use 3D printing, of course, because oh. now with new technologies, uh, we can use all sorts of new ways of doing things, make very light materials. You can color them in different colors. So um, today we often 3D print. Yeah, brilliant. So where was the original Dippy skeleton found? It's from the Western US, from Wyoming. All of the Diplodocus uh, skeletons that we know are from this part of the world. They are um, about 150 million years old and they're from a suite of rocks called uh, the Morrison Formation, which is very widespread over the American West. And Fern is not the only dinosaur in your brand new gardens. What can you tell me about Hypsilophodon? Yeah, we have a little dinosaur here as well, another little bronze of a British dinosaur called Hypsilophodon. Um, this dinosaur lived a little bit later in time than Fern, about maybe 125 to 130 million years ago. Um, and it's known from the Isle of Wight. Oh, amazing. Thank you very much for telling me all about your brand new gardens and Fern and Hypsilophodon. Thanks. Thank you very much.